Invertebrates are animals that neither possess nor develop a vertebral column commonly known as a backbone or spine, derived from the notochord. This includes all animals apart from the subphylum vertebrata. Familiar examples of invertebrates include arthropods, insects, arachnids, crustaceans, and myriapods, mollusks, chitons, snails, bivalves, squids, and octopuses, annelids, earthworms and leeches, and cnidarians, hydras, jellyfishes, sea anemones, and corals. The majority of animal species are invertebrates, one estimate puts the figure at 97%. Many invertebrate taxa have a greater number and variety of species than the entire subphylum of vertebrata. Some of the so called invertebrates, such as the tunicata and cephalochordata, are more closely related to the vertebrates than to other invertebrates. This makes the invertebrates paraphyletic, so the term has little meaning in taxonomy. Etymology The word, invertebrate, comes from the Latin word vertebra, which means a joint in general, and sometimes specifically a joint from the spinal column of a vertebrate. The jointed aspect of vertebra is derived from the concept of turning, expressed in the root verto or vorto, to turn. The prefix in means, not, or, without. Taxonomic significance The term invertebrates is not always precise among non-biologists since it does not accurately describe a taxon in the same way that arthropoda, vertebrata or manidae do. Each of these terms describes a valid taxon, phylum, subphylum or family. Invertebrata is a term of convenience, not a taxon. It has very little circumscriptional significance except within the chordata. The vertebrata as a subphylum comprises such a small proportion of the metazoa that to speak of the kingdom Animalia in terms of vertebrata and invertebrata has limited practicality. In the more formal taxonomy of Animalia other attributes that logically should precede the presence or absence of the vertebral column in constructing a cladogram, for example, the presence of a notochord. That would at least circumscribe the chordata. However, even the notochord would be a less fundamental criterion than aspects of embryological development and symmetry or perhaps borplan. Despite this, the concept of invertebrates as a taxon of animals has persisted for over a century among the laity, and within the zoological community and in its literature it remains in use as a term of convenience for animals that are not members of the Vertebrata. The following text reflects earlier scientific understanding of the term and of those animals which have constituted it. According to this understanding, invertebrates do not possess a skeleton of bone, either internal or external. They include hugely varied body plans. Many have fluid-filled, hydrostatic skeletons, like jellyfish or worms. Others have hard exoskeletons, outer shells like those of insects and crustaceans. The most familiar invertebrates include the protozoa, periphera, coelenterata, platyhelminthus, nematoda, annelida, echinodermata, mollusca and arthropoda. 
Arthropoda include insects, crustaceans and arachnids. Topic: <laughs> Number of extant species. By far the largest number of described invertebrate species are insects. The following table lists the number of described extant species for major invertebrate groups as estimated in the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species, 2014.3 other jellyfish, echinoderms, sponges, other worms etc. The IUCN estimates that 66,178 extant vertebrate species have been described, which means that over 95% of the described animal species in the world are invertebrates. Characteristics The trait that is common to all invertebrates is the absence of a vertebral column backbone. this creates a distinction between invertebrates and vertebrates. The distinction is one of convenience only, it is not based on any clear biologically homologous trait, any more than the common trait of having wings functionally unites insects, bats, and birds, or than not having wings unites tortoises, snails and sponges. Being animals, invertebrates are heterotrophs, and require sustenance in the form of the consumption of other organisms. With a few exceptions, such as the periphera, invertebrates generally have bodies composed of differentiated tissues. There is also typically a digestive chamber with one or two openings to the exterior. Topic: Morphology and symmetry. The body plans of most multicellular organisms exhibit some form of symmetry, whether radial, bilateral, or spherical. A minority, however, exhibit no symmetry. One example of asymmetric invertebrates includes all gastropod species. This is easily seen in snails and sea snails, which have helical shells. Slugs appear externally symmetrical, but their pneumostem breathing hole is located on the right side. Other gastropods develop external asymmetry, such as Glaucus atlanticus that develops asymmetrical serrata as they mature. The origin of gastropod asymmetry is a subject of scientific debate. Other examples of asymmetry are found in fiddler crabs and hermit crabs. They often have one claw much larger than the other. If a male fiddler loses its large claw, it will grow another on the opposite side after molting. Sessile animals such as sponges are asymmetrical alongside coral colonies with the exception of the individual polyps that exhibit radial symmetry, alpheidae claws that lack pincers, and some copepods, polyopisthocotylenes, and monogenians which parasitize by attachment or residency within the gill chamber of their fish hosts. Topic: Nervous system. Neurons differ in invertebrates from mammalian cells. Invertebrates' cells fire in response to similar stimuli as mammals, such as tissue trauma, high temperature, or changes in pH. The first invertebrate in which a neuron cell was identified was the medicinal leech, Harudo medicinalis, learning and memory using nociceptors in the sea hare. Aplysia has been described. 
Mollusk neurons are able to detect increasing pressures and tissue trauma. Neurons have been identified in a wide range of invertebrate species, including annelids, mollusks, nematodes, and arthropods. Topic: Respiratory system. One type of invertebrate respiratory system is the open respiratory system composed of spiracles, trachea, and tracheoles that terrestrial arthropods have to transport metabolic gases to and from tissues. The distribution of spiracles can vary greatly among the many orders of insects, but in general each segment of the body can have only one pair of spiracles, each of which connects to an atrium and has a relatively large tracheal tube behind it. The trachea are invaginations of the cuticular exoskeleton that branch throughout the body with diameters from only a few micrometers up to 0.8 mm. The smallest tubes, tracheoles, penetrate cells and serve as sites of diffusion for water, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. Gas may be conducted through the respiratory system by means of active ventilation or passive diffusion. Unlike vertebrates, insects do not generally carry oxygen in their hemolymph. A tracheal tube may contain ridge like circumferential rings of tenodia in various geometries such as loops or helices. In the head, thorax, or abdomen, trachea may also be connected to air sacs. Many insects, such as grasshoppers and bees, which actively pump the air sacs in their abdomen, are able to control the flow of air through their body. In some aquatic insects, the trachea exchange gas through the body wall directly, in the form of a gill, or function essentially as normal, via a plastron. Note that despite being internal, the trachea of arthropods are shed during molting ectysis. Reproduction. Like vertebrates, most invertebrates reproduce at least partly through sexual reproduction. They produce specialized reproductive cells that undergo meiosis to produce smaller, motile spermatozoa or larger, non-motile ova. These fuse to form zygotes, which develop into new individuals. Others are capable of asexual reproduction, or sometimes, both methods of reproduction. <laughs> Social interaction Social behavior is widespread in invertebrates, including cockroaches, termites, aphids, thrips, ants, bees, pasilidae, acari, spiders, and more. Social interaction is particularly salient in eusocial species but applies to other invertebrates as well. Insects recognize information transmitted by other insects. Phyla The term invertebrates covers several phyla. One of these are the sponges They were long thought to have diverged from other animals early. They lack the complex organization found in most other phyla. Their cells are differentiated, but in most cases not organized into distinct tissues. Sponges typically feed by drawing in water through pores. 
Some speculate that sponges are not so primitive, but may instead be secondarily simplified. The Ctenophora and the Cnidaria, which includes sea anemones, corals, and jellyfish, are radially symmetric and have digestive chambers with a single opening, which serves as both the mouth and the anus. Both have distinct tissues, but they are not organized into organs. There are only two main germ layers, the ectoderm and endoderm, with only scattered cells between them. As such, they are sometimes called diploblastic. The echinodermata are radially symmetric and exclusively marine, including starfish, asteroidea, sea urchins, echinoidea, brittle stars, orphiuroidea, sea cucumbers, holothuroidea, and feather stars, crinoidea. The largest animal phylum is also included within invertebrates, the arthropoda, including insects, spiders, crabs, and their kin. All these organisms have a body divided into repeating segments, typically with paired appendages. In addition, they possess a hardened exoskeleton that is periodically shed during growth. Two smaller phyla, the Onychophora and Tardigrada, are close relatives of the arthropods and share these traits. The nematoda or roundworms, are perhaps the second largest animal phylum, and are also invertebrates. Roundworms are typically microscopic, and occur in nearly every environment where there is water. A number are important parasites. Smaller phyla related to them are the Canorinca, Priapulida, and Lorisifera. These groups have a reduced colom, called a pseudocolom. Other invertebrates include the Nematea or ribbon worms, and the Sipuncula. Another phylum is Platyhelminthus, the flatworms. These were originally considered primitive, but it now appears they developed from more complex ancestors. Flatworms are echoalomates, lacking a body cavity, as are their closest relatives, the microscopic gastrotricha. The rotifera or rotifers, are common in aqueous environments. Invertebrates also include the acanthocephala or spiny-headed worms, the nathostomalida, micrognathozoa, and the cycleophora, also included are two of the most successful animal phyla, the mollusca and annelida. The former, which is the second largest animal phylum by number of described species, includes animals such as snails, clams, and squids, and the latter comprises the segmented worms, such as earthworms and leeches. These two groups have long been considered close relatives because of the common presence of trochophore larvae, but the annelids were considered closer to the arthropods because they are both segmented. Now, this is generally considered convergent evolution, owing to many morphological and genetic differences between the two phyla. Among lesser phyla of invertebrates are the hemichordata, or acorn worms, and the chaetognatha, or arrow worms. Other phyla include Acoilomorpha, Brachiopoda, Bryozoa, Entoprocta, Foranida, and Xenoturbolida. Topic: Classification of invertebrates. Invertebrates can be classified into several main categories, some of which are taxonomically obsolescent or debatable, but still used as terms of convenience. Each however appears in its own article at the following links. Sponges periphera, Comb jellies 
hydras, jellyfishes, sea anemones, and corals Cnidaria. Starfishes, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, Echinodermata. flatworms, Platyhelminthus. round or threadworms, Nematoda. earthworms and leeches, Annelida. insects, arachnids, crustaceans, and myriapods, Arthropoda. Chitons, snails, bivalves, squids, and octopuses. Mollusca. Topic: History. The earliest animal fossils appear to be those of invertebrates. 665 million year old fossils in the Trizona Formation at Trizona Bore, West Central Flinders, South Australia have been interpreted as being early sponges. Some paleontologists suggest that animals appeared much earlier, possibly as early as one billion year ago. Trace fossils such as tracks and burrows found in the Tonian era indicate the presence of triploblastic worms, like metazoans, roughly as large about 5 mm wide and complex as earthworms. Around 453 Maya, animals began diversifying, and many of the important groups of invertebrates diverged from one another. Fossils of invertebrates are found in various types of sediment from the Phanerozoic. Fossils of invertebrates are commonly used in stratigraphy. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Classification. Carl Linnaeus divided these animals into only two groups, the insecta and the now obsolete worms, worms. Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, who was appointed to the position of «curator of insecta and worms» at the Muséum National de Histoire Naturelle in 1793, both coined the term «invertebrate» to describe such animals and divided the original two groups into ten, by splitting Arachnida and Crustacea from the Linnean Insecta, and Mollusca, Annelida, Cirripedia, Radiata, Coelenterata and Infusoria from the Linnean Verms. They are now classified into over 30 phyla, from simple organisms such as sea sponges and flatworms to complex animals such as arthropods and mollusks. <laughs> Significance of the group Invertebrates are animals without a vertebral column. This has led to the conclusion that invertebrates are a group that deviates from the normal, vertebrates. This has been said to be because researchers in the past, such as Lamarck, viewed vertebrates as a «standard». In Lamarck's theory of evolution, he believed that characteristics acquired through the evolutionary process involved not only survival, but also progression toward a «higher form» to which humans and vertebrates were closer than invertebrates were. Although goal-directed evolution has been abandoned, the distinction of invertebrates and vertebrates persists to this day, even though the grouping has been noted to be hardly natural or even very sharp. Another reason cited for this continued distinction is that Lamarck created a precedent through his classifications which is now difficult to escape from. It is also possible that some humans believe that, they themselves being vertebrates, the group deserves more attention than invertebrates. In any event, in the 1968 edition of Invertebrate Zoology, it is noted that 
Division of the animal kingdom into vertebrates and invertebrates is artificial and reflects human bias in favor of man's own relatives. The book also points out that the group lumps a vast number of species together, so that no one characteristic describes all invertebrates. In addition, some species included are only remotely related to one another, with some more related to vertebrates than other invertebrates see paraphyly. In research For many centuries, invertebrates were neglected by biologists, in favor of big vertebrates and «useful» or charismatic species. Invertebrate biology was not a major field of study until the work of Linnaeus and Lamarck in the 18th century. During the 20th century, invertebrate zoology became one of the major fields of natural sciences, with prominent discoveries in the fields of medicine, genetics, paleontology, and ecology. The study of invertebrates has also benefited law enforcement, as arthropods, and especially insects, were discovered to be a source of information for forensic investigators. Two of the most commonly studied model organisms nowadays are invertebrates the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster and the nematode Kynorhabditis elegans. They have long been the most intensively studied model organisms, and were among the first life forms to be genetically sequenced. This was facilitated by the severely reduced state of their genomes, but many genes, introns, and linkages have been lost. Analysis of the starlet sea anemone genome has emphasized the importance of sponges, placozoans, and chonoflagellates, also being sequenced, in explaining the arrival of 1500 ancestral genes unique to animals. Invertebrates are also used by scientists in the field of aquatic biomonitoring to evaluate the effects of water pollution and climate change. See also Invertebrate zoology, classification of animals' body symmetry Invertebrate paleozoology Marine invertebrates Pain in invertebrates <laughs>